Astro 5 made several experimental features now stable, and one of those is Astro Server Islands. Now, if you're like me, seeing a feature actually used in a real life project is a big help. I recently redid my website, codinginpublic.dev, and I used Server Islands in there to display my YouTube videos dynamically. Now, I didn't want to do this client side, instead I'm streaming it in on the server. This allows me to statically render the entire page and then simply stream in the YouTube video content once I get that back from my YouTube RSS feed. I'm going to show you a simplified version of that in this video and we'll even look at one experimental feature that I've yet to show off on the channel. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. All right, so I've got a very basic Astro project going on here. You can see that all I've got is some Tailwind classes and the term video cards showing. Now, since we want the server to be involved after build, we need to make sure we add an SSR adapter as a starting point. So I'm going to go ahead and come over to my terminal, just use the MPX Astro command and add the node SSR adapter. Now you can use any SSR adapter. It should just install it and then update your config. Then let's go ahead and get this back up and running with npm run dev. Now it used to be that by default, as soon as you enabled an SSR adapter, the entire site was server side rendered. That is no longer the case. You can mark the entire site that way in your config if you want to, but right now it's still going to be statically rendered. We can actually prove that if we want, if we come over here and do npm run build, since we don't actually have anything that's server side rendered right now, if I come to my dist folder, you'll notice that I've got a client and I've got server, but this is my only route. And as you can see here, it's just static HTML. So what we want to do then is inside of this static HTML, kind of like lazy load stuff from the server, essentially. So we'll stream in some content from the server. So the very first thing I need to do is to create a component. So let's come over this way. And I'm just going to call this something like video cards .astro. Okay, so let's close that down, come over here. And let's just grab this for now. And I'm going to drop this directly here. We'll say something like uh, rendered from server or something like that. Okay, so now that I've got this, I'm going to go ahead and pull it in over this way. So we'll say a video cards. And that should show up for me, and it does. I'll hit enter and pull it in right here. Now, what we're going to do is essentially load this in right over here. So we need to get this back up and running with npm run dev. Now, currently, it's just building this statically. So in order to make it a server island, I need to come in here and use a directive. This is server colon defer. And as soon as I do that, it will mark this entire component as a server island. If I refresh really quickly, you may even see a little flash right there. Essentially, it's going to stream this in after the static page has been loaded from the server. So let's actually do two things. Number one, you can have a fallback. And to do that, we need a start and ending tag like this. And we're just going to have a div in here, which needs a slot called a fallback. And then inside here, let's go ahead and have this same text here. But we'll say like rendered on client or something like that. Okay, so first of all, it should say rendered on client. And then once the stuff comes in from the server, it'll say rendered on server. Now you can't see it so fast. So I need to actually come back over here and let's go ahead and just delay this. So when it's going to render on the server, let's just go ahead and await a new promise that resolves after two seconds. So if I save now, it should say rendered on client. After two seconds, it now says rendered on server. So I'm just trying to explain how this works first and then we'll implement YouTube itself. So let me come back over here. And if I come to the network, we're going to go ahead and refresh. And we should see a little island chunk somewhere in here. Let's see. Yeah, right here. So this video cards right here, you'll notice that once the response comes back from the server, it's just static HTML. This is just being streamed in from the server. It will actually wait for it or render the fallback first and then replace anything inside of that Astro Island, that server island rather, from the, the server as it streams in. So that's all we're doing, except in this case, instead of just rendering text, we're going to eventually render out these YouTube videos. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to do. Now what I want to do is go ahead and build out this fallback slot. Because ultimately, I'd want three cards showing here. And then we're going to replace those three cards with three cards from my particular YouTube channel. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all that. And let's go ahead and just create an array here. So we'll do array.from. And then I can just do a length here. We'll do a length of three. And then I'll map over these. So in other words, I'm just going to create three items here. And I'll do it directly here. Now, I don't care about the first argument here, but I do need to have the index. And for each of these, let's do a div with like border two. And let's also do like padding four and rounded. And then let's go ahead and save it. That's looking good so far. We'll do like a width of 60, something like that. And maybe a height of 40 for now. Okay, so they're at least showing up right now. That's good. Now let's go ahead and create uh, a little wrapper here. So let's add a class. We'll do like flex gap four, flex wrap. All right, that'll work. Cool. All right, so you can see they're there and then they remove. So inside of this div, I do want to have some other stuff. So let's go ahead and close this div off because inside here, I'm going to want to have an SVG. 
I actually have an SVG over here called play.svg. There's a new experimental feature we might as well play around with. So let me come over here to astroconfig.mjs, and I'll just mark this experimental like this. And then it's called SVG. We're just going to set this to true. And basically what it lets you do is import an SVG. All right, so let's go ahead and import that. We'll come up top here and say import like play button, and we'll grab this from assets play SVG. Now it does need to be uppercase. That's just how HTML works. If you use a lowercase tag, it could actually think, the browser could think it's a, like a custom tag, so we don't want to do that. And now you'll see that that shows up there. Let's go ahead and grid place items center like that, and that should put it right in the middle. Okay, so that's at least like a helpful starting point. Obviously, it could be a lot better. We could add like an animation class if we wanted to. Maybe like, I don't know, let's do like a pulse or something. All right, there we go. So now it looks like something is happening. It's loading in, and then eventually it says rendered from server. So we've done the first step, which is getting this to load properly. Now we're actually loading in this data. Let's now come over here and kind of do the same thing, except in this case, what we want to do is pull in actual data from the YouTube channel. So I'm gonna leave that await on there just to make sure we've got lots of time so we can see it actually happening in real time. Now we're just gonna use a simple fetch here. So let's just await fetch. And I'm just gonna fetch my YouTube XML link. Now, every YouTube channel actually has one of these. You just use feeds forward slash videos dot XML, question mark, channel ID, whatever your channel ID happens to be. So you can use your own here if you'd like to. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and console log this. We wanna make sure that this is done obviously on the server. So let's come over here and see what we've got. So we've got all this coming in here, that's good. What I wanna grab then is I wanna grab the text off of that. So we're just gonna call this XML and we'll grab this from await rec.text. And then finally, let's go ahead and console log this. So as you can see over here, I'm actually getting back all this stuff and it's just in XML format. So I need to actually find some way to parse this so I can work with it on the server. Now there may be some other package, but the one I found is just called XML to JSON util. So I'm gonna come over here and we'll just install it. Again, it's XML to JSON util. All right, so let's get rid of that console log and come up top here. And we're just going to import XML to JSON util. This comes from XML to JSON util. And we can use this right here to go ahead and parse the XML. So I'll call this something like parsed XML. And this will be equal to XML to JSON util. And we're just going to pass it the XML. Now, just so we can see what we're getting here, I'll console log this as well. In fact, if we console dir it like this, we can actually come inside here and add a depth property. And we'll set this to infinity. And then that way we can see like all the different layers here. Let's get rid of this starting point. There we go. All right, so back over here, you can see now we've got this parsed down and we can see all the way down in the structure of this, this output. Okay, so now I've got what I need here. This YouTube video ID is the important one, right? This actually tells me what the video ID is. So I can use that to show everything I need from the thumbnail to linking to the video to all that. So now that I know what I'm getting, let's come over here. We'll say like final videos equals and I just want to grab the top three for now. So I'm going to grab my parsed XML dot feed dot entry, and we're just going to slice off zero, two, three. Now, if we were to come back over here and scroll all the way to the top, you'd see that all these live underneath something called a feed. So feed dot entry, and then we've got all these different entries inside of here. Now, what I want to do is just map over each of these. So it's an array. And for each of these, we're just going to call them videos. And I'll just type it as any for now so that TypeScript will be happy since I'm not parsing this structured data as it comes back. And for each of these items, I want to return an object. This is only going to have two things. It'll have a title, which will be the video.title, and it will also have an ID. And that was simply called video. And then it had a kind of a funky property name that is YouTube colon video ID. So because it has a colon, I think I do need to actually put it in this bracketed notation, but essentially it's the same as this dot notation. Just since it's got this character, I need to put it like that. So this should return to me a final video array with an object just like this. So let's just double check that that's actually happening. I'll come down this way and it should just have three items in it. Let's come back over here, scroll all the way to the bottom. And there you go. So we've got these top three. So that gives me everything I need to display what I want to on this page. Perfect, all right, so let's come down here. And the last step is just to render the video cards that we will replace over this way. Now I've already got a helper by uh, creating this right here, right? So I basically went the same structure. Now I'm just going to do it inside of the video cards component. So we're gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna come in here and grab my final videos. And I'm just gonna map over each video. Now for each video, I'm just gonna go ahead and destructure the title and also the ID. And now let's go ahead and just paste that back in. Now we do need to go ahead and grab the play button as well since I'm using it over here, just so it won't be mad at me. All right, perfect. So now I've got the play button eventually coming in over here. 
and it should look the same in a second. Now here we're essentially going to have two things. We're going to have a link that has the image inside of the video, and then we'll have this little play button over the top that will just open up that link. So let's go ahead and add that link, and this is going to be dynamic. We've got the ID, so we should be able to link directly to the video. Now the way YouTube links work, we'll do www.youtube.com slash watch, and this will just be V equals, and then whatever the ID happens to be. Now inside here is where we're going to have the image. Now we could of course do a couple different things here. We could use the astro image component. I'm just going to use the normal image tag in HTML to keep it simple. Now once again, this is going to need an SRC, and this once again will be dynamic. All right, I'll go ahead and paste that in just so you can grab it yourself. And then let's add a few more things. We'll have the alt. This will be title. Then we'll also have a width. Let's manually set this to something like 300. And then we'll set a height here to something like 165. Okay, let's go ahead and save this. And eventually this should pull in in a second. All right, I'm not seeing anything come in here. And I think I see my rookie mistake. All right, I'm not actually returning. So I need to actually return in here. So let's do that. And there we go. Now all the videos are coming in. Now, obviously, they're still pulsing, so we don't want that. <laughs> and we also have padding, which I don't want that much padding. Let's do, uh, actually, let's just do like two, something like that. And then finally, I need to make sure that this play button is in the center. So let, we could do this a couple different ways. But for now, let's just go ahead and like give this a class. So we can say absolute. And I think that should put it directly in the center. Now, what I might want to do is come over here to the play and just set this to current color. And that way, I can let the text color declare it. So here, I could say like text white. And that means in the loading stages, they'll be black, but eventually it'll be white when they come over this way. All right, so that's mostly there. Obviously, I also need some kind of wrapper around this. And when I come back over this way, you'll notice that I do have this, but it's part of the slot itself. So because of that, I need to actually have this same kind of wrapping mechanism over here. So let's go ahead and do that. And that should be closed with the div as well. So now they're actually coming in streamed from the server. If I click on any of these, they should actually take me to that YouTube video. And you see, that's what it does. So cool. Now, obviously, there's way more you could do to make this look better. Hopefully, I did that on my own site. You could also type this so it doesn't yell at you about this being any. But at this point, hopefully, that gives you at least an understanding of how this works. Last thing, obviously, would be to remove this so you're not waiting artificially. And you'll see how it streams in fairly quickly. It parses that data, returns those three videos to you. And as soon as that data is done at the server, it streams it in and replaces that whole fallback slot. I should probably also remove this slot fallback. There we go. I trust seeing a server action in real life was a big help to you. Remember, you can grab the code in the description if you want to grab your own YouTube feed and swap it out and obviously probably design it better than I did here. But thanks so much for watching. I hope it was a big help. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.